What's up, everybody? Calvin Bluey of FKN Deliciousness, and this is All Things... Wait, All Things... Not All Things Considered, that's a NPR show. All, all Drinks Considered! Oh my god, this is my own show. We are, during, we are in lockdown right now, so this is the first time that I'm actually sitting at my bar with a friend, and actually a good friend, and we're gonna do 40 minutes of pure nonsense you're gonna know what it's like to speak to a distiller, ask a distiller questions, play truth or dare with the distiller. You ever play truth or dare? A few times. Okay. This is Adam West. West. Westbrook. Westbrook. How you doing, friends? Nice to see you all. They can't hear you, bro. It's nice to say. Hey. Uh, Adam is the master distiller of Lady Chu Gin. A gin that is made here in Vietnam. That's right. Made with local botanicals, made with uh, the love and care from somebody who's been doing this for a very long time. And we're gonna go and dive into three gins today. I got a bunch of questions that I'm gonna ask him. Uh, and we're gonna do this. You ready to do this? I'm ready to do this, but one thing first. Oh no. We're gonna talk about gin. Yeah. We're gonna have a Quick drink, I think. We have one ready. Cheers. What are we drinking here? So this is where you this is where we hold the bottle up. So yeah, we uh, we started with Lady True Gym uh, back maybe eleven months or so ago now. In terms of production, we uh, launched the first of our lab series gins uh, in November of last year at Saigon Gym Fest. Uh, that was a really exciting time for us. We actually won Best in Gin Show, so uh, I was pretty pleased with that one. Uh, we've started with what we call the Lab Series. So the Lab Series is kind of an experimental range of gins that we've come up with. That? And the idea being that uh, you know I'm not from Vietnam, and we wanted to make a really, truly kind of quintessentially Vietnamese gin. And I figured that the kind of best way for us to do that was to experiment, to explore. This is a, a country that has incredible biodiversity and we wanted to use as many of those botanicals as we possibly could, those plants, herbs, spices, citrus, fruits. And there are just so many incredible different versions of those here that instead of making one gin, we figured let's make four. So we decided to start that way. And the first one that uh, Cal and I are having a drink of today is the Mekong Delta Dry Gym. Now the Mekong Delta is a is an area south of Saigon. It's really heavy. I mean, it's a port city. There's there's, there's a lot of fruit grown in that region. So you have Ben Chè, you have Kentha, you have so like all the fruits kind of come from that that region. Did that really play into when you made this this uh, this first Lady Chu? Was it, that kind of, was it more of a citrus gin that you were making? I mean, one of the things that I thought of... You, you drink really slow. When we... <laughs> you drink really slow. <laughs> you know, one of the things that came to my mind... I think we should pour one more for me. <laughs> when we were Because I'm already done. This is not, this is not a, a show where you should be drinking with us. This is very informative. But if you want to drink, come on. Yeah, do, <laughs> do not try and keep up with the hosts here, guys. Thank no, you. No, I mean... Um, Rivers, right? They are kind of the lifeblood of uh, agriculture, of farming. And yeah. so the Mekong, to me, as I kind of imagined this when we came into the idea of making this gym, was really the lifeblood of the farming community, of the agricultural community of the area. Mm. Think of it almost as like the kind of vein that pumps the blood around the body, you know? And so uh, we discovered that because of that, there is a a huge a multitude of amazing botanicals that grow in that area and we didn't want to just focus on the botanicals as well it was more about the lifestyle it was more about the cuisine and about how people live and we tried to kind of express our passion our joy in discovering this area in flavor form in terms of the gym you, you should hurry up and finish it we have the Mekong Delta Dry, we garnished it with an orange peel and a cinnamon stick. Now these two things that you can find at your house, these 
these are things that you can go to local supermarket. What do you guys call it in back home? Supermarket. Good. Yeah, you pretty much Good. have that. Good. And you can go and get an orange and you can peel the rind. You don't want the white, right? You want this. Yeah, exactly. You want the zest. You don't want the, the, the white part. We call that the pith. The pith mm. is quite bitter. I mean, one of the great things, and we can maybe get into this in a little bit more detail later, but with citrus in particular as a botanical that we use in gin, all of the fantastic flavors are right there in the peel, in the essential oils, you mm. know? So just that very thin layer across the top has got all of that amazing flavor in there. And actually, if you've ever, you know, been to a cocktail bar and uh, maybe you had something, I don't know, like a Cosmopolitan and you saw the bartender do something like this with a little bit of orange zest across the top of your drink, and you may notice a little spray coming out of that orange peel. Those are the essential oils. That's where all of the flavor is captured. And so that's what we wanted to do with the signature garnish for this gym. Very well said. You're still not drinking. <laughs> mm. I'm a big gin, gin lover because um, for me, it's like the flavor profile of gin is, has always been different gins speak differently. You have floral, you have dry, you have spice. You have other stuff that I can't remember right now because I've had a few, but everyone has his own characteristics and they all pair well with food differently, right? So we're talking about uh, one of your gins earlier pairing well with a red snapper, mm -hmm. right? Red snapper is a very, it's a white fish, although it has red in its name. It's not a red, it's not a red. Kind of strange, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's flaky, but it has a nice, uh, has nice denseness and it has a great, I would say fishy flavor, but it's seafood esque. Pairs well with. Wait, before I go further, what is gin? There you go. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point for us because, you know, every gin in the world has one thing and one thing only in common. And that is. Uh, Water. A little guy called the juniper berry, actually. And I need that too. <laughs> but I mean, I guess there's some water in there. Right? Yeah. But no, I mean, for a very long time, for most of the 20th century, there was pretty much uh, one style of gin that was very, very dominant. London dry gin. We're probably familiar with that term. You probably heard London dry gin. It was not the first style of gin. It is not the last. But for a long time, there was a certain way that a gin was made and it had a certain profile to it. Okay. Uh, kind of in modern times, since sort of 2000 and onwards, thanks to uh, you know, a few creative friends of ours in the industry, people like Hendrix, uh, people like Tanqueray when they came out with Tanqueray 10, even our dear friends at uh, Bombay when they changed Bombay Dry Gin to Bombay Sapphire, yeah. uh, started just to kind of play with the idea that we didn't necessarily need to follow that particular flavor profile directly. Mm. So despite the fact that there are many different styles of gin out there now, there is one thing and one thing only that they all have in common. Which is water. Aside from water, <laughs> it's the juniper berry. So the one thing that you cannot have gin without is juniper berries. Every single gin in the world has juniper berries inside. And it's the only element that goes into Lady Chu gins uh, that we do import from outside. Okay. Juniper berries, do they, are they all the same or do they vary? It depends, I guess, on which kind of botanist you speak to. But most people would agree that there are somewhere between 50 and 65 different varieties of juniper. Mm -hmm. Some of them are kind of large and twisted like trees. Uh, a lot of them are like kind of little shrubs, little hedgerows. The one, generally speaking, that is used in gin production is uh, Juniperus communis, or common juniper. And uh, it's a very ancient plant, 250 or so million years old, much older than humans are as a species. And every single gin that you've seen on every single shelf in every bar is flavored with juniper. But what's really exciting about gin today, and you know, particularly for us here in Vietnam, and Vietnam being part of Asia, is that people are being a bit more explorative today with the botanicals that they use alongside the juniper. So the juniper that goes into the gin is kind of the main flavor that goes in there. But aside from that, we really have a blank canvas. We have an open book in terms of the flavors that we want to add in 
to bring something unique, to bring something a little bit different out of those. And that's why with Lady Chu, we went with the idea of a lab series of not just bringing one gin to the table, but bringing several yes. at the same sure. time. Again, I want to go back to the idea that Vietnam has such amazing biodiversity that we wanted to explore very different flavor profiles that are available here in Vietnam in very different gins. But going back to your question about what is a gin, let's just simplify it and break it down a little bit. Go ahead, because I'm not speaking at all in this whole episode. We're talk I know, it's maybe the one time that you've ever done one of these with someone who speaks more than you, this right? This is great. This is great. <laughs> I literally can just sit back and just 40 minutes after this, I can get monetized and make some money, so I'm all good. <laughs> no, so gin is uh, a spirit. So, okay, we're going to uh, effectively ferment something that we then distill, and we're going to turn that into a high-strength alcohol. Now, if we were talking about whiskey or we were talking about rum, we would flavor that by aging it afterwards. So we're going to sit that in an oak cask for a period of time. Maybe that oak cask has had sherry or something like that in there. That's where a, a whiskey or a rum gets its flavor from. Generally speaking with gin, we don't age our spirits by and large. And so the flavors that go in there come from a second distillation. We call that rectification. So we rectify a spirit that we've already distilled by adding botanicals in there, one of which must be juniper, and outside of that, everything else goes. Oh. <clears throat> I have a bunch of questions that, I, that we got from Instagram and from Facebook. I feel like I could go 40 minutes just talking to you without looking at the questions, but I will be doing the audience this justice by not asking the questions. So how about I do this? I'll ask a question, and then we'll see where it leads to. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. I have a question. <laughs> so here's the next part of this question. I can start really easy and then get to the hard stuff or go from the hard stuff and get really easy. Whichever way works best for you, my Woo! friend. It is time. I'm up right. to the challenge. Let's go. Up to the challenge. You ready? Mm -hmm. Adam, have you ever thought about doing a durian gin? Doing a durian gin. Wow. That, that, was, hard. that was hard to say. Wow. Okay. So we got to like one of my really kind of soft spots immediately. Uh, I have kind of a. I've already done it too. I have yeah. a kind of sensitive nose, and um, of all of the flavors that I have loved and enjoyed in my maybe five years in Asia now, yep. I can say definitively that durian is not one of them. <laughs> I'm really sorry, my friends. I am not a big fan of durian. Although interesting. Have you thought about it? Have you thought the question was? Have you ever thought about doing a durian gin? Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly flavorsome, right? One of the main things about durian, you can smell it from like the aroma. Half, half a mile away. Yeah. So if you, if you wanted to do something like that, I think you would have to be quite um, subtle with mm. the amount of durian that you use. But you still want the essence of durian in there. Else you can call it a durian gin. I mean, when we talk about gin, everything is about balance, yeah. right? It's about how the juniper balances against the other botanicals that go in there. It's, you know, something we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. I, I often think about gin as kind of like a mixing desk, if you like, for a, a music producer, right? So you have to kind of bring the volume levels up and down on various different flavors, find a balance between them all. Durian is quite a strong flavor, mm -hmm. uh, but I do know uh, that there are some guys in Malaysia who uh, came up with some cool recipes for gin that I think they have made in Belgium, and I think those guys have maybe done a durian gin. Okay. I haven't tasted it yet. Uh, for me, it would be kind of a, kind of a tricky one, and uh, possibly not for me, but uh, I never rule anything out. You know, our gin series at the moment is called the Lab Series. Yeah. It's about experimentation. Do so you have a little lab coat? I do. I have several, yeah. It's kind of big, though, because I, I could have been a weight on recently. <laughs> but yeah, durian gin is possible. You know, any botanical is possible in a gin, but it's all about the balance. Okay. Another question. You ready? I've already finished my number two, so I'm ready to go into the next gin, which is the Dalat Flower Bomb. And if we'll talk about the region of Dalat first, and then why flowers are important to that region. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> so if we talk, if we talk and then what about are we going to this list? Because he's going to do it now. So I think you know. Let's just keep it. Well, orange and cinnamon. The, we have star anise. We have 
a few other stuff over there. Star anise would have been really great with the uh, Mekong because it's one of the flavors that goes in there. But for the Dalat, it's a really unique style of gin. And I think maybe why don't we just have a little taste of this on the rocks, actually? Oh, yeah, 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 on the rocks. Okay, okay. So, uh. yeah, Dalat, of course, here in Vietnam, super notable for its flowers, you know. Right. Uh, it's, uh, I think, 1,500 meters above sea level. So you get a really kind of temperate climate, comparatively speaking, for Vietnam compared to other parts of the country. Uh, it's often said that you can experience four seasons within one day in Dalat. You know, the, the summer in the afternoon, the winter in the evening, the spring in the morning. And it has... You're like, you're like a heavyweight for gin. Well, I do try my best, you know. You he, are he is a, good. He is kind of a, an idol of mine. But uh, no, but Dalat is really kind of something that we could think of as the garden of Vietnam. You know, if you go great, to Dalat, great, great, great. you are surrounded by beautiful fields of flowers, incredible lakes, waterfalls. And the soil there is so fertile that there are incredible various plants that grow there. Mm. But the thing, I guess, that Dalat is famous for is those flowers, you know. That's right. And so we really wanted to encapsulate the floral, perfumed kind of wonderful scent that you could feel if you walked around Dalat like a uh, you know 7 p.m. of an evening watching the sun go down and the scent that you would get that fragrance from the fields of flowers that you would find mm. around you uh, and that was kind of what was in my mind when we decided to come up with the flavor profile of the Dalat flower okay one thing you taught me earlier in the day or the night that we were here you don't want to swirl the the gin but you want to Really, let the glass be at least. What do you do? Call it? Like, yeah, I mean, you can roll your glass. Roll. A little roll. Bit. So, so for me, when I'm tasting a gin that I haven't tasted before, I mean, of course, I have with this one. I would normally taste it uh, neat, neat first. Yeah. Yep. On the nose, and then interestingly, grab hold of your nose and have a taste, and then release your nose, and it's going to teach you a little bit about how you experience flavor because a very large part of how we experience flavor comes from the nose not just from the tongue that is true and then the second thing i'll do is add a little bit of ice and because we use botanicals to flavor gin those essential oils that come out of the botanicals really open up a little bit when we add a little bit of dilution in there so that ice that comes into it so that will Opens just it up. open up some of those flavors invigorate them a little bit but yeah, when you're talking about invigorate them, what kind of words do you have in that brain of yours, bro? Well, you just called me the Hemingway of gin, right? So you I've are got, the Hemingway I've, of gin. I've, 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 I'm gonna try and use some big words. <laughs> in my staff right now are like, you are good. Okay, so you smell it, and then you plug your nose, you taste, and you and then you open your nose. Yeah, yeah. Just to see the differences, it's just an idea that I like to give people because how you experience flavor is not just with your tongue, but it's with your nose in a very big way. Not as five well. senses, right? Now, actually, for you guys, the truth of that is I just wanted to make Calvin look a bit dumb and hold Oh, it. my God! No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, okay. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. So, a, so in California, especially the Bay Area, we used to have a, something called lemon verbenum. Ver, verbenum? Verbena. Verbena. That's, a, that's a old... That's a, that's a, it's been a long time since I, since I got to use that, that product. But it's very citrusy. Almost like lemongrass, but it doesn't have that lemon. It doesn't have that lemongrass essence, but it does. This is very floral. I guess they call it flower bomb, right? What makes a gin floral compared to what makes a gin dry? Not a question that I written down earlier, by the way. This is kind of come to my head. So I mean. One thing I'm going to say to begin with is all of the gins that we're going to have a look at today are dry gins. So dry... London dries, right? Dry, not London dry. Oh. Uh, not, there's a lot of rules around what makes something a London dry. It doesn't have to come from London. It doesn't even have to come from England. It's a set of preparation techniques of how you make it. Okay. But when we talk about dry in alcohol terms, dry effectively means the opposite of sweet. Okay. okay. So when we say dry in gin terminology, what we what we mean is that there has been no sweetness added post distillation, and I don't do that with any of our gins. There so, are no sweetness added post distillation. So you take from so the fermentation. You're not adding sugar. And you just, you're not you adding distill. honey. You're not right. adding anything that's going to sweeten it. Okay. Right? Okay. I mean, if you think about wine, you get sweet wine and you get dry wine. Mm -hmm. 
And kind of, I guess, the same with gin. Yeah, so dry effectively means no sweetness has been added. And all of these gins are technically dry gins. The Mekong Delta Dry is more of a, a traditional style of dry gin, which is why we've named it that way. What brings the floral notes out in the Dalat Flower Bomb is about the botanicals that we use and about the way that we prepare them. So I wanted clearly to use flowers because we wanted to celebrate the flowers of Dalat and that kind of background. So we use three kinds of flower in here, chrysanthemum. Shh. Don't tell them. Don't worry, it's fine. I'm going to share the secrets with you guys, don't worry. But then they'll, they'll know and they're going to create like a uh, Compton, Compton flower bomb. Okay, if anybody can, after knowing the botanicals that I put in my gin, <laughs> replicate it directly and send a bottle to me and it tastes the same, Yes. I bring you over, you're my new assistant distiller. In fact, I'm your assistant distiller. Oh! And you get the top job. Okay, because yeah. we can use the same botanicals in but a gin, but the levels, ratios, right? yeah. correct, and different preparation rates. Now, the three flowers that we use in Dalat are chrysanthemum, mm -hmm. lotus, and jasmine. Okay, for those right now who are in... Uh, Alabama, Arkansas, maybe uh, Idaho. They don't know what those fly flowers are all about. Can you give a quick, if, like, quick rundown of what the profiles are for all of those things? Chrysanthemum is something that you only find in Asia. Uh, I'm not sure if you only find chrysanthemum in Asia. I mean, the, the classic kind of Vietnamese flower amongst yeah. those three is the lotus to me. Mm. You know, the lotus really kind of invokes Vietnam to me when I think about it and it brings a nice balance to the flavors so we have both some floral notes uh -huh. but also we have some kind of balanced earthy notes that we get from the lotus flower the chrysanthemum does bring a lot of perfume mm -hmm. the jasmine is the interesting one because that actually brings a little more dryness to the gin I mean jasmine tea right you're mm -hmm. familiar with jasmine tea I am because I'm Asian and jet <laughs> Yeah, which, okay. <laughs> There's only uh, 8,900 subscribers, so don't worry about it. So jasmine, jasmine tea. Uh, tea is kind of a dry taste on the palate. So I actually use the jasmine less for bringing fragrance to the flavor profile of this gin and more as a drying agent and something that kind of binds the other flavors together. Mm. But probably the main kind of scent that you get from the Dalat flower bomb, aside from the flowers. And it was really interesting to me that you mentioned lemon verbena. I did, because it's, 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 I know lemon verbena, verbena is a flower. Lemongrass is a stalk. I don't think you would use, and lemongrass isn't found in Dalat, so I'm and like- by the way, what? neither lemongrass nor lemon verbena wow. are in Dalat flower bomb. What the hell? Sometimes things yes. smell and taste like something that they're not. And my favorite botanical that I've found so far since I've been in Vietnam is the one that is making you think of lemon verbena and makes a lot of people think of lemongrass when they taste this. And it's called... Wait, no. Oh, oh. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, it's called Cubeb. So, uh, it's called Cubeb, like a kebab? Cubeb. C-U-B-E-B. Cubeb. You know that one, Shin? Cubeb? C-U-B-E-B? Cubeb. Yeah. Google that one, then. So, <laughs> so it's a really famous or not, it's a very traditional botanical that's been used in gin for maybe 200 years. It is found here in Vietnam. Well, this is what I learned. Oh. So I always previously knew cubeb as something that was intrinsically Indonesian. In fact, sometimes it's known as the Java pepper. And a pepper? Yeah, cubeb berry, cubeb pepper. It's given two different names, sometimes Java pepper. And, you know, we have amazing peppers here in Vietnam. We do, right? we do. Pepper and citrus heaven in Vietnam. And the cubeb uh, pepper is sometimes, as I said, known as the Java pepper. Very, very famous from Indonesia. When I came here and I started investigating the botanicals that were available to me, I was amazed to find that there was a, a cubeb variant that was grown here in Vietnam. And it has a completely different profile to the Indonesian version. So the Indonesian cubeb is very much a grapefruit, kind of pomelo sort of citrus mm -hmm. nose to it. Whereas cubeb grown here in Vietnam, lemongrass, lemon verbena, yeah. and a little bit of floral sweetness to it. And 
you know, I, I always think you shouldn't kind of pick favorites amongst your children, right? But if I think of the botanicals <gasps> of my children, Cubeb pepper of Vietnam is probably my favorite. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, I know what it is now. You know it? We, we Googled it, yeah. Stingman. Yeah. Uh, like my top. Now, Cubeb pepper, it has a stinging reaction on the, pa on, on the tip of the tongue. Well, a lot of peppers have that. Actually, if we go back to the uh, Mekong Delta Drive we for a moment, we, can. we use uh, what I call wild forest pepper in this one. And it's basically uh, a member of the Szechuan family. Is the and wild Szech pepper in the Sapa region? Uh, I, know, I know that one. Maybe not. Cause I could... It is grown there. Yeah, yeah. It grows, it grows in Lao Cai province. Very yes. well done. <laughs> Very you. well done. You get a high thank five for thank that. You. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank but you. yeah, you know, that kind of tingling sensation <laughs> yeah. that you get from the a Szechuan pepper, pepper right? yeah. it kind of comes from that variety of the family. But the Cubeb pepper, I would say, is kind of on the other side of that in so much as it is incredibly floral, incredibly perfumed, and incredibly citrus-led. And every, nearly every person that I've given a glass of uh, the Lap Flower Bomb to for the first time, they're like, ah, oh, lemon verbena or lemongrass. And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. I haven't even got to like, any questions besides that, the, 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 uh, the dirty one. Okay, continue on. And we're gonna, we're gonna do one more Flower Bomb. We have 14 minutes left. Wow. I know. You're good. We've been talking a lot. No, I wouldn't say we. It's I right. have been talking a lot. That's right. Okay, yeah. okay. But everybody's watching right now and everybody's tuning in. So they're getting a master class on gin right now. This is what people will pay thousands and thousands of dong, which is only like, which is only like 25 cents. Yeah, but that's all I'm worth. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. Don't worry about it. To get into, should we do one more flower bomb and then go into the... Yeah, let's do it. Point? Okay. While you're pouring those, I'll just do a quick recap on both of those. Recap so time! If I had a little... If I had an editor right now, they would throw in just like little side said Recap time! The Mekong Delta Dry. Okay, here we go. Quintessential style of dry gin. So mm. it's really great for a gin and tonic. The Delap Flower Bomb. So fragranced, so floral, that we really wanted to give this as a tool for bartenders to mm. use as a modifier for cocktails. Mm. So you add some Dalat flower bomb to a classic cocktail like a Last Word, a Negroni. Uh, a last Word. I know we know Negroni. We 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 call our Negroni Negrizzle my chisel. Negrizzle my chisel. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call. It. That's what I call it my bar. Negrizzle my, my my chisel. But I've never heard of the first one. Last word. Yeah. What's in there? All about that green chartreuse from France. So it's a super herbal cocktail. We got some maraschino liqueur in there, some green chartreuse, some gin, and some lime juice. Uh huh. And when you add the last flower bomb to a classic cocktail like that, it just kind of the nose of this is so unique that it brings something really different to a classic cocktail. I'm not even going to go look my, my notes right now because I have a question right now for you because for me, this is something that, that when, I go, when I go cocktailing, that's even a, that's even a verb. It is now. <laughs> it is now. Um, I like to see old school cocktails elevated and then new school cocktails that are like using the smoke machine and like, what's that machine that you have at the, at the, at the lab? Well, we have the Rotovap. The we, Rotovap. We have I the mean. Sonic Maceration Unit. We, we have a few toys over there. He's just trying to throw out stuff right now. Like he's, oh, we, we, we're gin and tonic now. Oh. I will say this. When we were at uh, Gin Fest in Saigon last year, mm -hmm. and uh, they won best gin, best new gin or just best gin? Best gin. Best gin. Uh, I had Adam in a, in a lab coat. And he was just, Calvin, I have all of my, my, my babies here. We got to drink all of them. I probably had like 10 of these. Sounds about right. I didn't drive home, but I should have drove. I, I mean, I couldn't drive home. I, 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 I took a cab, but oh my God, it was so good. I'm glad that you took a cab because yeah, we man. at Lady Chu Jin do advocate responsible drinking. Always and so don't, don't, don't watch my show because we don't advocate responsible drinking. Dude, I drink 20 beers on my show. 
Yeah, beer is like water. Don't worry about that. When I'm talking about drinking, I'm talking about proper stuff like gin. Atta boy, atta boy. This is why we're not going to go through all the bottles and drink every last drink tonight. But maybe tomorrow. Maybe. Yes. Question. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Uh, what is the name of your still? I hear that all the distillers name their name their still. And when I say still, I mean it's like it's it's a it's a med, it's a stainless steel vat, right? So well, certainly not stainless steel. No. No. What is it? My copper. Bad. Copper. Yeah. You know how much copper it is right now? Yeah. Wow. So copper makes uh, interesting chemical reactions between botanicals and alcohol and water when it makes contact with them. Really? Co copper stills were the original ones that were invented effectively in the 7th century by a Persian alchemist called Javan Ibn Habir. And uh, yeah, the interaction that you get between mm -hmm. the alcohol and the yeah. copper yeah. kind of takes away certain compounds and brings other compounds in and it makes things taste delicious. Is that why there's... I wouldn't say a super metallic taste to gin, but there is a little bit of a metallic taste to it. I mean, I'm not saying like super, but no co copper. Cop I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you can stainless steel can work. Copper is much better. Okay. It's a great uh, catalyst for flavors. It's also a great uh, catalyst for heat and for a, sure. a sure. lot of. Different but copper is not cheap. Copper is very expensive. Copper pans that we use for the restaurant are like. I can't even afford a, a full copper pan. It's like a copper middle part in, in, the, in, in, the, in the pan because it retains heat so well. Correct. Yes. And that's exactly why it's really, really good for making gin. Yes. Okay, what did you name your still? So, well, we have a few stills, but the main one, our big girl. Bertha. She, our, well, no, she's just called the Lady. Because Lady Ju. Let's talk about the name Lady Ju and where did that name come from? So, for our friends outside of Vietnam who don't know as much about Lady Chu as our friends inside of Vietnam. Which is going to be 99.9999% of my audience right now. So, Lady Chu is, uh, she's a historical figure from Vietnam, uh, a third century kind of independence warrior. She, uh, she had a difficult upbringing and she decided to forgo what was supposed to be what she was supposed to do in life. And she went away into the countryside and she gathered uh, a band of warriors around her and she effectively fought for the independence of her people, her region and herself. Are done. And we're back down to eight minutes left. So we gotta, we gotta go into the, the, the road right now. Why, are, why do you have, this guy has two full glasses over here while I am drinking on camera for the audience and show them what's up. Because responsible drinking. Oh, that's right. My bad. But when the camera's off, I mean, I'm totally going to take him down. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no, okay. I'm kidding. No, Lady True is a really important figure in Vietnamese history, okay? She represents the strength, the independence, and the pride of the Vietnamese people. And she represents everything that I think, and we as a, as a distilling company at Lady True Gin think is fantastic about Vietnam. So every time that we try to excel, try to... Try to kind of have pride in what we did and, and, and do something well. I mean, I can't think of a better figure in Vietnamese history to attach our name to than her. So every time that I'm making a new gin and I'm trying my best to do it, I'm thinking about her kind of looking up at me and, you know, it's got to be done well because what a person. What a person indeed. Let's get into the last gin, which is our spiced gin. Yeah, so this is the new one. <laughs> are you at a level of one to ten right now? How how lit are you? Like a point three, five. right? Point five, right? Yeah, point five. So this is the Hoi An Spice Road Gym. Got to put this right, right to the camera. There you go. Take it back. <laughs> and this one is super new. We've only just released this uh, two weeks ago. I'm really really excited about it. Oh, dude, don't even tell me about excited. Tell them how ex. Dude, you're ecstatic, bro. You literally just, you know, I'm trying to think of the right word without being demonetized. You were so excited that your willy was willing around. Come on, dude. This is your. This is what you're so proud of. 
No. I'm proud of my fish tacos. Look, all three of these gins are incredible. Look, no, they're beyond incredible. All three of these gins, I'm really proud of them all. Uh, the new one is just something that I'm really, really happy with. Okay, but we're going to pour it now because we have literally eight minutes. I got an outro to do. What are, we, what, are, what are we doing with this one? We're doing just tonic and lime? Or tonic, tonic and yeah, we're going to go with uh, some lime and some tonic with this one, I think. It's a great savory uh, profile. So the Hoi An Spice Road Gin, we wanted something that contrasted against the Dalat Flower Bomb. The Dalat is very, very floral, very, very uh, on the nose, you know? It's all about that perfume and about bringing something unique and a little bit different to cocktails. The Mekong Delta Dry was about making a classic style of gin, something that a gin drinker of 20 years could be familiar with. With the Hoi An, okay, if I, can I be honest? Well, you, I had a hangover one day, you, right? You've been honest thus far for, for 37 minutes, so I mean, why start now? I had a hangover one day, and what's the best drink to have when you have a hangover? Gatorade. What's the best alcoholic drink to have when you have a hangover? Bloody Mary. A Bloody Mary, right? And the Bloody Mary, if you take out the vodka and add gin, we call it a red snapper instead. And so... Who's we? The general community at large. Really? And also, sometimes I use that, you know, the royal we thing. Yeah. But, yeah. No. So, so, I mean... I've learned some of this stuff. I own a bar. I don't know this stuff. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. A, a Bloody Mary with gin instead of vodka is called a red snapper. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I had a thumping head that morning. We'd had a great night the day before, and I was like, you know what I really need? Wait, I wasn't invited. You were there. Oh, that night. You don't remember? Oh, and is that one time you did that one thing? Listen, jumping, yeah, jump, jump, jumping out of a cake. <laughs> jumping out of a cake topless was only a one-time thing. Dude. Yeah, we were trying to recreate the scene from that Steven Seagal movie, but let's not talk about that right now. What Steven Seagal movie was that? The one where the girl jumps out of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You, are, you guys don't want to hang out with us. I don't know why people like <laughs> yeah, watching. Apparently not. I don't want to watch this, this show, dude. I'm like, what are you watching my show for? Okay. This is the, excuse me, I haven't... Hoi An Spice Road Gin. Okay. So, when I hear Spice Road, I always think about, like, uh, the Spice Trade M. Like, what, who is that fucking fool that discovered America? Depends on which history book you read, oh, I guess. True. But yeah, the Spice Trade is a good way of looking at it. Yes. Hoi An as a city was effectively the epicenter of the spice trade pretty much between the 15th and the 18th centuries and Damn, that's good dude damn that's good thanks i didn't talk to you i talked to the line damn that's good no so you know <laughs> as much as uh, the dalat was about the flavors of dalat and the mekong was about the essence of the mekong delta what hoi an is about is players. The mercantile uh, situation, you know. Yes, because traders come in together to buy and sell spices from each other and trade them in and out, and yeah. so it was a melting pot of cultures, of spices, of flavors, of traditions, and we really wanted to respect that when we came with the Hoi An. I'm and trying to figure out what flavor I have right now to like show a little bit of flex. Yeah, let me see what you got. This is going to be really weird, but I'm going to say cilantro. Is that American for uh, coriander? Yes. To the rest of the world, <laughs> cilantro is what American people call coriander. I use, I use cilantro in my salsa, and so this is something that, like, when, when, you, when, I, when, I, when I drink it, I really, I really have that cilantro sound. So all three of these gins have... Coriander, cilantro inside. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we give these guys a language, and what did they do with it? But never they, mind. They, they made all these extra letters to it. So uh, we use coriander seed in all three of our gins. If juniper has to be in every single gin, yeah, coriander seed is in at least ninety to ninety-five percent of all gins in the world. But it, the seed doesn't taste like the plant, right? So it doesn't. It's a pepperiness. 
I'm glad that you're kind of noticing a, a sort of herbaceous note. Yes. With the uh, with the Hoyam. Black cardamom and ginger are really what I've gone with on this one. I like a little bit of smoke. I wanted it to feel like it had, had an aging process, even though it hasn't. And then the ginger just gives it a sweetness and a spice together. I'm going to do some research next time before I bring you on. Guys, thank you so much for sitting through 42 minutes of this guy talking and me literally saying nothing. I, first episode that I got to just chill out and hang out. Lady Ju is the sponsor of this video today. I'm so happy to have them on for all drinks considered. To say this guy is really like my epitome of like doing interviews. So thank you so much, brother. If I may just add one thing before we finish. Uh, you got like 37 seconds left to like throw stuff in there. So it is World Gin Day tomorrow and our wonderful distributors, Alchemy Asia Wines and Spirits here in Vietnam have a fantastic offer speak for, Viet, uh, for speak, Lady speak True Gin. Hurry up, hurry up, speak faster, dude. Literally, you have 18 seconds left, dude. So if you go to the uh, Alchemy Asia Facebook page, you can buy one bottle full size of Lady True Gin and you will receive a 200 ml bottle and also four bottles of Fever Tree Tonic and two of our...